The president has touched down in Rio de Janeiro for the G20 Leaders Summit. The world's the world's biggest decision makers gathered together to hash out pressing issues like poverty global economic stability and climate change. The two-day event in Brazil is a high-stakes forum that unites leaders from the planet's most powerful economies to make decisions affecting billions of lives. And, of course, we will be taking over the presidency of the G20. Uh, Malaika Matladzi has stayed up uh, all night, essentially, to speak to us, and we really, really appreciate your patience. Researcher at the Institute for, Af- for Pan-African Thought at the University of Johannesburg. Uh, thank you so much for your time. President Ramaphosa, of course, leading South Africa's delegation with a real focus on the elimination of poverty and hunger. Malaika? Hi, good morning, Bongani. Good morning, Bongani, and good morning to your listeners. So um, the issue of poverty and hunger has been quite a very big discussion point at the G20 summit. It was also a very big discussion point at the previous G20 social, which took place from Wednesday the, the 13th um, and ended on Saturday. And quite very interesting developments have occurred in that regard. Um, yesterday, there was an official launch of the Global Alliance on Hunger and Poverty, which was launched by the Brazilian um, G20 presidency, and this is quite a very important um, establishment or development because um, at the assumption of the G20 presidency, uh, Brazil did put um, inequality and poverty as one of its key priorities and focus areas alongside um, climate change as well as tax reform. And I think there have been quite some very interesting developments with regards to the Lata Bongani, um, specifically the declaration by the um, Jan- Rio de Janeiro G20 ministerial declaration on international tax and cooperation. Now, various um, international and local as well as regional and, um, NGOs and civil society organizations have been um, you know, fighting for the adoption of a recommendation on progressive taxation, which they've argued that it's a, you know, one of the key tools to reduce domestic inequalities and to strengthen fiscal sustainability. Just a few days ago, the National Treasury did indicate to Parliament in South Africa that there are discussions underway about about um, you know discussions around you know tax reform in South Africa, and I think the declaration now by the Rio de Janeiro Ministerial um, Declaration yeah. on Tax International Tax Cooperation is quite a very important development in that regard. There are many people who are outsiders to these discussions and processes who might be cynical. We've just had mm-hmm. COP29, for example, in Azerbaijan, mm-hmm. and uh, some might argue there wasn't a huge movement on climate change. Now we're talking about reducing poverty and inequality amongst uh, the world's 20 most powerful economies. But when you talk about fair trade and market access, particularly for developing countries, there are obvious hurdles to overcome. I think one of the biggest things that is very interesting about this um, this international taxation is that you remember that with um, with COP29, one of the biggest arguments that has been um, raised, uh, particularly around climate finance, which was, you know, it's, it's estimated at about $5 trillion to fund. The argument has been that there isn't sufficient resources by governments um, to be able to realize these climate, uh, climate goals. You know, I mean, obviously developing countries in particular, which are most affected by climate change, do not have the resources to fund, um, you know, for climate finance. And the argument has always been about resources. But once we then deal with the issue of um, tax reform, then, you know, G20 governments are beginning to come a little bit closer. We are now starting to see a, an alignment between what they are declaring at COP, um, in terms of COP, but also what is being declared in terms of what the governments themselves will be able to do to raise these resources. And this tax reform is, in fact, at the heart of that, that part of what it's been trying to do is to address the issue of how do we raise climate financing without further indebting uh, poor developing uh, developing countries. And of course, it's one of the biggest, um, I suppose the ball is in South Africa's court now in terms of the continuation of the fight against, you know, a lot of these things can be declarations, but the implementation ultimately depends on the political will of these G20 countries and particularly on the amount of pressure that the pres- a country that's chairing the G20 is able to exert right. um, in terms of the pressure. Yeah. And of course, it sets uh, the stage very nicely because at the end of this summit, South Africa will be taking over the presidency of the G20 and will be hosting the summit next year.
Yes, and I think it's quite very, it, um, it, it, it does. And one of the things I think, Boganda, is very interesting that really we must raise is that, um, you know, just yesterday there was, a, uh, you know, the, the establishment of a new G20 coalition for local and regional production of vaccines. And you remember that this is one of the biggest conversations that has been happening in South Africa now, that, you know, particularly following the COVID-19 um, pandemic, that, you know, we need to be having our own sovereign and our own strength in our own vaccine production. But now that this is now a declaration of the G20, um, coalition for this production of regional and, and production of vaccines. South Africa's position in terms of its own political will in facilitating this will be seen now that we have the G20 presidency and this has been a declaration that has been made in terms of the importance of this um, of the establishment of this coalition. All right. Malaika Matlats, I appreciate your time. Researcher at the Institute for Pan-African Thought at the University of Johannesburg. Current events. Developing stories. Tough questions. Your voice making a difference. This is Breakfast with Bongani Bingwa.